The production of a premium bottle of Oregon Pinot Noir starts in the vineyard. Overall, this process will take close to two years until a finished product can be appreciated. Throughout the first growing season, the vineyard manager pays the closest attention to details to produce grapes of the highest quality, free of pest, and of distinctive flavors. As harvest approaches, the winemaker checks the grape maturity in the vineyard daily and collects samples to measure the grape sugar levels, their acidity, and evaluate their flavors which will assist him in deciding the exact picking date. By mid-October, the winemaker has identified the blocks that are most advanced in ripeness and the blocks where the grapes will be left to hang a few more days to reach their desired maturity. At this point in time, in Oregon in particular, the looming rains are the main threat to the wine quality. If the rains were to come too early, the winemaker would have to confront two critical decisions. To pick before the rain, with the risk of picking grapes that have a high acidity, low sugar concentration, and possibly lack some of the flavors that would otherwise be produced, or hope for the uncertain return of the sun in a few days and leave the grapes to mature longer. If the grapes were picked during the rain, the vine would uptake water through its roots and gorge its berries, therefore reducing the sugar and flavor concentrations. This year, the rains have decided to come in later than usual, leaving ample time for the grapes to mature well. On harvest day, the picking crew is ready at sunrise. It's best to have an early start while the temperatures are still low. This will keep the grapes fresh and the flavors intact. The pickers harvest along each row's filling plastic buckets. Once filled, they transfer the grapes to half-ton bins that will then be delivered by tractor to the winery up the hill. At the winery, as the bins arrive with fresh grapes from the vineyard, they are weighed and stacked away before sorting. The grapes are then unloaded into the hopper of a vibrating table. This vibrating table delivers the grape at a constant rate to the sorting line. Here, the sorting crew can remove all the leaves, branches, and moldy bunches that might have made it into the bin. The clusters are then dropped along a slide into the destemmer. This process gently separates the whole berries from the green stems. These green stems will later be composted and returned to the vineyard. At the other end of the destemmer, the berries and grape juice mixture, at this point also called the must, 
is transported inside the winery and transferred by gravity into a fermentation tank. Now the must will be held at cold temperature for a few days before initiating the fermentation. This cold maceration period is referred to as cold soak and helps extract some of the flavors and tannins out of the skin and into the juice. This year, the grapes harvested from the entire 82-acre vineyard, amounting to close to 150 tons, were picked, sorted, and brought into the winery in just over one week. The winery is equipped with fermentation tanks of various shapes and sizes, which gives a lot of flexibility to the winemaker to work on each batch individually. Throughout the cold soak period, it is important to recirculate the must and to cover it with carbon dioxide at least once a day. Doing so limits any bacterial contamination which could result in undesirable aromas. The fermentation is most often initiated by adding specific commercial yeast strains However, the winemaker may decide to leave some of the tanks grow their own yeast population that is naturally found in the vineyard and in the winery. These yeast will convert the sugar contained in the must into ethyl alcohol, as well as specific flavors and aromas. During the fermentation process, some heat is produced and some carbon dioxide is released, pushing the grape berries to the surface of the tank and forming what is called a cap. This cap can build up heat and needs to be recirculated to homogenize the temperature and to improve the flavor extraction. The cap management is traditionally done by pushing the cap back down into the fermenting wine during what is called a punch-down. Punch-downs are done at least once to twice a day throughout the fermentation period, which may take in most cases from two to three weeks. On the larger open-top fermentation tanks, a hydraulic piston is used to punch down the cap. Such piece of equipment makes it easy for one person to do punch downs on tanks containing up to eight tons of must. Another cap management method used here is the pump over. The pump over method consists in collecting juice through a valve at the bottom of the tank and re-delivering it at the top of the tank using a pump and a hose. This method in particular is well suited for closed top tanks which cannot be punched down. The winemaker may decide to do a pump over on open top fermenters as well. When doing so, however, it's important to wet the entire surface of the cap to avoid contamination and to maximize extraction. A cellar technician measures the temperature, sugar concentration, and acidity in each ferment daily 
Typically, their sugar concentration starts around 24%. Its concentration will decline to less than 1%. At this point, the wine usually contains close to 13% alcohol,